Okay, so I'm here at our new Moss Thorns Gallery in the Center for Art and Design at Fort Hayes State University. We're looking at Robert Joy's Mixed Media Works. That's this guy right here. He's also with another old alumni, Ron Michael, who did the ceramic and sculpture. So we're going to take a look around real quick. So this is the sculpture work that Ron Michael made, kind of non-objective, pretty abstract. But what I'm really interested in showing is the mixed media works. And so I have a student assistant of mine here, and I'll introduce her in just a minute. I'm trying to get in real close so you can see some detail. Robert Joy's work. Pretty interesting guy. He mixes some pretty unique media. I think we, we're gonna look at these five works here real quick. So Alexis, come on up here mm -hmm. and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Alexis Carabinas. I'm Brian's or Mr. Hutchinson's work assistant. And How do you know Robert? I know Robert because at my previous college at Bart Community College, he would sit in front of my desk every day and work on these drawings slash paintings. Okay. So talk a little bit about his method, if you remember. I remember he typically started with an ink pen of some sort um, or maybe a really light marker and he would do the outlines of the drawing he wanted to do. His process honestly came from his mind and stories he lived and if you ask him personally he has a very distinct story about each and every drawing but his process is very unique to him. He doesn't like an actual border and he doesn't create an actual border until he starts to add color. Okay, so does he work with his figures first, like this, uh, like this woman with the baby on the back and the basket, or what is he, like the landscape elements? What does he work on first in terms of subject matter? In terms of subject matter, he typically starts to do his background or nature aspects, and if there is a figure, he typically maps that out by a basic um, drawing, a uh, light drawing in the middle, depending on where he wants to go. Okay, so how does he mix his media? What does he do to mix it up? Well, he first has to decide on whether he wants his piece to be all color or all black and white or have a mixed genre. So it all depends on what his mood is for this piece. So for example, this metal piece here, and if you look at what he's doing, there are frogs there. It's a nature background. We could easily put green, yellows, blues, but he wanted to keep it relatively neutral and that's a very artistic choice. So does he often add color, you think, after he does all the black and white work? Yes, he, I believe he does his outlines and uh, gesticular marks first, and then adds his color story. And I do not know if he has a color story in mind or he just goes along with one object and moves forward. Kind of reminds me of Zen Tangles a little bit, all the little separations, like each one of those little areas in here, to me, is like a, an individual composition. Mm -hmm. Especially the way he colors them in and stuff. So how long does he work on a piece typically? It depends on the piece. I've seen him finish a piece in a day. I've seen him only do a tiny little corner in three hours. He sat in front of my desk every day from 10 in the morning to around noon. And that's typically when he went home. But if there were special days when we had guest artists come in and work on their stuff, he would come in and sit down. It was kind of his daily routine. His wife would pick him up and they'd go home. Cool. Yeah, it looks like you would have a preconceived notion in mind, but it's also so loose that I feel like he could add whatever he wanted. Did he erase much as he worked? I don't believe so. So just kind of worked straight up? I think so. The separation in here, yeah. where these little shapes, that was not planned. There wasn't a drawn out sketch of exactly what he wanted. I think he did every little shape at a time or he started with um, maybe pencil in the beginning, but I typically saw him with a marker or an ink of some sort. And watercolor. Yes, and watercolor. There are some pieces where you can see um, uh, pe colored pencil type marks. Yeah, let's look at some of those on the other side. Oh, this one's a good one, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's an excellent one. It's kind of like a crazy coloring page or something. So if you see right here, you can see the individual marks of how he shades. He does a really good blending, but sometimes he does it on purpose um, to make sure that you can see his medium of choice. So he leaves, like if he were a painter, he'd leave a lot of brush strokes. Mm -hmm. And especially like here in the face. Obviously, a lot of people don't necessarily have dark purple faces, but it, that was his color method. He didn't necessarily make everything how it was supposed to be. Huh. Okay. So one of these might be represented as 
or we might think of one of these as almost like a, a piece that he'd started and decided, okay, it looks great as a black and white. I don't really need to add other media. Mm -hmm. So does he use India ink, Sharpie? What does he use? I feel like, uh, you know like those micro pens? Yeah. I think that's what he used, and if not, a similar brand, because they're all relatively the same kind of uh, pressure in the marks. Like there's no like really light marks, there's no too dark marks, kind of with a giant Sharpie. If you press hard, it'll spread on the ink on the paper. This one feels like a heat wave for sure. Mm -hmm. cool. And a lot of people have compared his works to like Where's Waldo? Oh, yeah, where they yeah. Where can find specific images. Because there's so much going on in each one. There's kind of a spread of the gallery. It's not in very good focus. Camera's kind of adjusting to all these crazy different light scenarios. But a lot of his work up in here. People like his stuff. They buy his stuff. But you told me he gives his stuff away too. Yeah, sometimes. Or he'll ask opinions. I oh, remember. That's not a good one. Let's go here. My, uh, desk and asking me what he thought about my work. What you thought about it? Yeah. That's I cool. had to take pictures of every single one of his pieces because he had no electronic um, source of his work. He all just had it in giant boxes and his wife wanted to have it all electronically documented. So he's kind of a relatively hands-on artist, doesn't mm -hmm. worry too much about technology. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, his work's pretty intriguing. Drawings are pretty simplistic, yet complex. And so that's what I love about his mixed media work. He's using the medium for what it's really, really good for in each case. Maybe he put acrylic in the background and then used colored pencil on top, is what some of it kind of looks like. Seems like a lot of artists are doing this now. They don't really stick within one medium anymore. If you take a look in here, this animal, to me it's like a dragonfly or a bird of some sort, it is repeated in all of his works. He has a very repetitive manner in his works, whether it's a shape background or an animal or the way he draws people, they are not anatomically correct, and I think he does that on purpose. Yeah, so he's an abstract artist for sure. Yes. Oh, cool. Thank you, Alexis. Mm -hmm. Hope you like his work.